Hey, what's up? My name is Christian and this is Orbiter. I would like to make a type one civilization within my lifetime, but in order to do that, there needs to be some drastic changes occurring in our economies. This video aims to evaluate the potential evolutions in our global economy and what it may look like after we've taken control of all the energy sources on Earth. So stick around to the end to find out what all this might mean for you. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel to support my goal of upgrading civilization. So let's get into this. Sabotage, a common word today, but like all words, it had a beginning. Some historians speculate that it originates in France during the first industrial revolution, where factory workers wearing wooden shoes, called sabots, destroyed the new machines that were designed to automate their jobs. Ironically, they accomplished this by clogging the machines with clogs. Now, was it wrong for them to desire a utopia where they could maintain their jobs and provide for their families, even though the machines did a better job? Maybe, but one thing's for sure, this was rational. Little did they know that this wasn't the automation that was going to reduce employment on a macro scale. In fact, the automations from that era ended up making even more jobs in the end. Since then, several industrial revolutions have occurred, and right now we're in the early stages of the fourth. This era of innovation is likely to be exponentially more impactful and rapid in the way it changes the industries we grew up with, and for the first time, no hype intended, the machines are definitely coming for our jobs now. So why do I feel so confident about this anyway? I mean, people have been talking about this kind of automation for centuries, but I do have good reason to suspect that this time is different. It all goes back to the main drivers behind the fourth industrial revolution, which are robotics, artificial intelligence, and access to an abundance of renewable energy. So let's break it down. AI is a software that can improve itself over time, while robotics deals with machines helping people to accomplish goals in the physical world. And renewable energy is a sustainable, cheap energy source that can be acquired almost anywhere. At this very moment, all of these drivers are coming together to solve some of the hardest problems in the world and automating systems that we never thought could have been possible. The degree of optimization speculated this decade and those that follow is huge, to the point where jobs we know of today may cease to exist. The potential outcomes for this technological revolution are laid out in a recent McKinsey report, mentioning how 40% of the labor force in the US will see a shrink or cut in employment by 2030. And that's just the beginning. These are some of the industries at risk, so myself and many other people may need to reevaluate our slot in the economy. It makes sense that governments and companies will continue to push the limits of what can be automated. After all, when machines are capable of working 24-7, improve over time, and are cheap to power, why wouldn't you? Well, an obvious reason is the worker, right? So what happens to them? I'll be touching on that near the end, so stick around. But generally speaking, it seems we're trending toward a model of increased automation. And by the time we become a type one civilization, I'd speculate that only a small number of highly specialized and passionate people will be working the jobs we're familiar with today. In the near future, I could easily imagine many businesses like restaurants, airports, or even factories operating with only a small number of troubleshooters who help with updating the machines and performing maintenance. As we approach an automated world, we can only hope that governments or smart contracts have established an efficient and fair way to allocate the increased creation of wealth. Because with more automation, we can expect cheaper products and the companies making them are likely to become much larger and consolidated. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think people will choose for it to be this way. And I base that view off my own experience and hard data. For instance, the majority of internet users use Google. You're probably watching me on a video site owned by Google. Even though there are countless other options like my favorite search engine, Ecosia, that's my choice since they plant trees with every search. But back to my point, people don't typically care because Google is the best. This seems to occur because of a common trait in humanity where we instinctually avoid the second best option if we can. But what makes companies like Google the best? 
Various tech companies are well positioned to continue consolidating market share because they have access to enormous amounts of data on individuals, habits, and preferences. Countries and companies that have large data sets like that at this early point in the fourth industrial revolution have a huge advantage over others that don't. There's a lot of reasons for why, but let's just say that large data sets provide more context and allows for the AI softwares to improve faster sometimes. What truly makes me believe bigger companies will keep getting bigger is because some of the largest AI innovators also have their hands in the robotics industry. And if you consider that renewable energy will decrease the electrical cost of manufacturing and powering robots, it strikes me as the perfect game of Monopoly. So the future is a monopolized corporate dystopia? Maybe. But I would like to think that what lies ahead will trigger a massive shift in the way we structure our corporations. Let's try to zoom out from our political ideologies just for a moment and think about this issue with the context that the transition to becoming more autonomous is going to create a lot of fear and financial insecurity for some. Jobs people thought would be around forever are beginning to fade and the identity they intertwined with their career is shattering. If precautions aren't taken to react to a growing number of unemployed people, or worse, a sudden innovation that automates jobs quicker, we could see a large number of impulsive people throwing their shoes in the machines yet again. Another important piece of context is that countries throughout the world have been trending more toward democracy in the last couple decades. But ironically, a third of most people's day is spent working for an authoritarian corporation. Personally, I think that's pretty unfair at times. But I'd be lying if I didn't agree that hierarchies in a company can be efficient, and the people that created them deserve a leading say in what happens. The real question is how do we get anywhere with this, when some people argue that the free market will self-correct and constantly create new jobs, while others advocate for government controlling the means of production? Well, that difference in mentality is one of the most complex hurdles we have ahead of us if we plan to become a type 1 civilization. It's important to remember that things like capitalism, socialism, and communism were all systems theorized for a different era in response to different issues. And it's possible the how could be a series of stages that utilizes ideas from each ideology. I envision the fourth industrial revolution have three distinct phases of economic shift over the next hundred years, which is also the time we are expected to become a type one civilization. Despite the years of warnings that are likely to occur, I think it's more likely that countries are going to ignore the problem of automation at first. That is until the professional white collar class become outsourced themselves, like the radiologists, accountants, and entry level programmers. They along with millions of other quote unquote low skilled workers and elderly will be disadvantaged at this time. Eventually the increased inequalities and consolidation will be impossible to ignore and governments will begin trying to redistribute the money through value added taxes or requiring some kind of automation layoff pension. At this point, prices of commodities and transportation should be significantly lower due to cheap renewable energy and the savings from autonomy, thus increasing the purchasing power of individuals. Most people will still work a job that resembles today's market but will have more freedom to decide where and when they work since a universal basic income funded by taxes on automation will be insured to most people. The increase in free time and cash flow is bound to satisfy Maslow's hierarchy of needs too, which will amplify people's desire to seek more control over their lives. That desire is likely to take shape within corporations, leading to the creation of more decentralized companies on a blockchain or increased democratic influence into large company decisions. By the turn of the century, I'd speculate we'll only have about 25% actively involved in the workforce as essential workers. While all access to basic needs will be guaranteed for most people, an automation dividends or UBI will be scaled up as more autonomous wealth is created. Following that, people's identity may no longer correspond with the career they're in but more so with the passions they choose. A job as we know it will fade into history and a refined job will emerge, 
where the production of value could be something as simple as caring for, inspiring, teaching, or creating something an AI hasn't yet. So if that timeline doesn't sit well with you, I can't blame you. Talk about speculations gone mad. But there is something I know I am right about. The majority of all jobs that exist right now, whether in the physical world or the database of a secretary's computer, have something in common. Most jobs are basically just moving something from point A to point B, whether it's in the final product or a byte of data. My inspiration for this topic comes from the idea that humanity is meant for something more. And I think we should do what we do best, which is being inefficient and emotionally driven. It's a wild time we live in, huh? Although every generation says that about the era they live in, what makes this century different from others is that we're trending toward a world that improves without human involvement. Having complete control over Earth's energy in combination with self-improving software and robots that can build themselves is going to create an unrecognizable economy. Some people will be fearful, while others accept this new world with no questions asked. Wherever you lie on the spectrum though, keep in mind that change is inevitable and every economic system so far in history has vanished. So why wouldn't our current one? I really hope you enjoyed my take on the matter, and yes, there were a lot of things I couldn't get to in this one, but let me know down in the comment section what you think the future economy is going to look like. And subscribe for more content on Type 1 Civilizations and Sustainability. It really helps out a small channel like mine. But anyways, keep orbiting, and I'll see you in the next one.